Natasha Adair, the newest face in the CAA. Everything is going to be new for you yes. this year. Let's start. <laughs> Welcome to the CAA. How difficult is it to, to come from the Southern Conference to, to the CAA, a new league? It's almost like every game is going to be a non-conference for, for you. Well, again, the good thing is it's, it's really not new for, for myself and my staff. Uh, I'm a Washingtonian, born and raised from the DMV, so it's good for, for me to get back home. And, and uh, most of my assistant coaches as well are familiar with the Northeast. Um, the good thing is, though, our, our kids, uh, just coming off of, of a great season, they have been very flexible. They've been, they've been, the word is adjustment. In the game of basketball, you have to adjust. And, and last year we did, and I thought we did so beautifully. And this year, it's just, it's just a step forward. Um, anytime you can compete against some of the nation's best, and you can be amongst the elite, and, and that's the way I feel in the CAA with the coaches and the camaraderie and, and just uh, the level of play. So I'm thrilled, I'm looking forward to it, and I can't wait to get started. Coach, you have eight teams that have made postseason play that yes. are, you're going to be facing this year. What are the biggest challenges for you, not just the adjustment to the CAA mm -hmm. overall, but what are your biggest concerns for your team? Well, the biggest thing is, is again, is, is uh, consistency mm -hmm. um, and, and just that longevity f for a long season, keeping everyone healthy. Uh, we're pretty deep. Uh, we have 15 scholarship student athletes, and, and knock on wood, we stay healthy. That's going to play into our versatility. Um, will we be ready? Absolutely. Will we be prepared? You know, I, that doesn't worry me. Um, last year, we were fortunate to play a very strong non-conference, the national champion. Um, you know, this year we have in-state rival South Carolina. We we have. Um, no stranger to you, the Maryland Terrapins, uh, on our schedule. But again, for us to keep emphasizing how we want to play and, and playing late in March and early in April, we have to play those teams. And, and so it's a challenge that I welcome. It's a challenge that, again, we have senior leadership um, and, and we have experience. So I, I don't think that's going to be too much too soon, and, and I don't think it's going to overwhelm them. But I think we just have to... to plan it in stride and not look ahead too far. It's one game at a time and then we grow from there. Well, you certainly do have some key cogs back. Every coach loves a yes. good floor general. And of course you have three year starter Jillian Brown yes. at that point guard position, top 15 in the, country, in the country with over six assists per game. What does she mean to this team? Matt, she's our, she's our glue. Um, Jill goes as we go. You know, and, and she, we call her Rondo. I, I mean, she has the long <laughs> arms to match, but again, she, she takes, she doesn't take too many risks. Um, she, she, if she played poker, if she played chess, you know, you, you would never know what she was thinking, but, but the kids respect her. She comes in every day and gives the same effort. It, it's always the best. Uh, you can always count on her and to have her leading us. Uh, again, you know, I hate that she is a senior because it, 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 she's so skilled at, at what she does. And um, our players trust her. They feel good on the court with her. And Alyssa Fry and her have been playing together since AAU basketball days. So they have that camaraderie and they have that comfort w with one another. So I am thrilled to have her on the floor. Well, speaking of Alyssa Fry, just with her 95 three-pointers last I mean, that's we amazing. It, we I let it go. I we see. let it go. <laughs> well, Jill Brown has someone to set up on the outside, but how does that help spread the floor for you offensively to have someone that can shoot the ball that well? Well, again, we, we score quick. We want to score in transition. That's kind of how we play and, and who we are. Um, and Alyssa Fry, she knows how to move well without the ball. Um, she does not just run to one spot on the floor. We move in our offense. We, we create opportunities, um, very disciplined on the offensive end. But again, I think we're, we're good on both sides of the ball, honestly, because uh, we, we play defensively, we play up-tempo, we, we press, we trap. Uh, and with our 15 players, you're going to see di different lineups uh, in and out to create those easy scoring opportunities. So I just like the way that they play together, and, and Alyssa Fry moves extremely well.
You know, as a player, I know senior year of high school, mm -hmm. you tore your ACL. I did. You were ready to go to UConn, uh -huh. hadn't signed your national letter of intent yet. Yes. You end up having to go to junior college, yeah. and then you attend South Florida, have a good playing career. Right. How did that experience shape your life as a coach in terms of how you treat your players mm -hmm. and the relationships you build both on the recruiting trail and once you get them at the school? Well, I think that um, you can never take for granted any opportunity, you know, and, and if anything that I can instill in our players, it's just being in the moment. Don't wait for tomorrow because you don't know what tomorrow's going to bring. And we talk about going hard all the time and playing hard all the time um, and just sharing my story with my players and, and with recruits. Um, what's for you is for you. And, and so I, I'm... Would I change anything? Absolutely not, because I think it, it humbled me. It made me appreciate even more just the opportunities that were afforded to me. And um, our student athletes really appreciate just what they have and, and learning how to play in the moment. And you have four freshmen coming in this year. Yes. How my babies. Bought, yes. <laughs> They're my babies. <laughs> I love it. How have they bought into your philosophy so far? You know, they have so much personality and character. Um, they shake it up a little bit. Uh, they take risk as freshmen. They talk. They communicate. They get after it. And so where they're, you know, their learning curve as freshmen and, and, you know, are they going to have bumps and bruises down the road? I'm sure. But that's just being a freshman and just the long season and practices and things like that. But where they are, their talent, um, uh, their experience to be so young and just their toughness. Mm -hmm. Our freshmen are tough. And what they're doing is they're, they're pushing the upperclassmen a little bit and it's making for great just competition in the, in the gym. So to be able to have those as options and, and I'm looking forward to my freshmen contributing good minutes in, in their freshman year. Mm -hmm. 16 wins in your first year. What do you do for an encore? That's the third most in a quarter we century celebrate. at College of Charleston. We celebrate it. <laughs> no, again, it was a team effort. And uh, people say, well, Coach, what did you do? I had a team that bought in. And they bought in from day one. Um, and, and that made it easier. They wanted to be better. And so it was whatever we told them. Luckily, it worked, you know. <laughs> but, but we had fun doing it. And uh, they're a great group of, of young women. Um, and they were very fun to coach. Uh, and it was just about telling them what they could do and what they could achieve and just highlighted that. And, and we did that game by game. And uh, a lot of first wins. Uh, we dedicated the, the, the year to the seniors. And uh, it was just about what legacy you wanted to leave. And so they did that beautifully. College of Charleston head coach Natasha Adair again. Welcome to the league and good luck in your first season in CAA play. Matt and Christy, thank mm -hmm. you.